The abdominal aorta is a retroperitoneal structure. It enters the abdominal cavity through the aortic hiatus. It is widest at the proximal region and is narrowest at its distal end before it bifurcates into the left and right common iliac arteries. Fasting before the exam is recommended whenever possible. This will aid in decreasing the amount of bowel gas shadows, which can drastically decrease the quality of images. Views should be obtained with the patient in the supine position. Place a sheet to cover the patient below the level of the pubic symphysis. The ideal transducer for assessing structures within the abdomen is a curvilinear array probe with a frequency range of 2 to 5 megahertz. Select the abdomen preset on the ultrasound device. When feasible, the examination should include the following. Transverse and longitudinal views of the vessel at the proximal level near the diaphragm, at the mid-level, and at the distal end. Transverse and longitudinal views of the left and right common iliac arteries at 1.5 centimeters distal to the bifurcation of the abdominal aorta. In each image, label the abdominal aorta or iliac artery and measure its diameter. First, bring up a view of the abdominal aorta in the transverse plane. Orient the probe so that the probe marker is pointing toward the patient's right. Begin scanning just below the xiphoid process and continue scanning inferiorly to approximately the level of the umbilicus. Keep in mind that the proximal abdominal aorta is deeper than the distal abdominal aorta, so adjust the depth and focus position accordingly. In this mid-transverse view of the abdominal aorta, note its position in relation to the inferior vena cava and the spine. There are several features that will help to distinguish the abdominal aorta from the inferior vena cava. The aorta tends to be located to the left of the patient's midline, whereas the IVC is located to the right. The aorta appears circular in cross-section, while the IVC may appear elliptical or teardrop-shaped. The aorta is pulsatile, while the IVC is not as pulsatile. The aorta is not compressible under gentle pressure, but the IVC is. The abdominal aorta shows no change in size with respiration or sniffing, whereas the normal IVC shows up to 50% or more change in diameter with respiration or sniffing. Next, view the abdominal aorta in the longitudinal plane. Orient the probe so that the probe marker is pointing cephalid. Begin scanning just below the xiphoid process and continue scanning inferiorly to approximately the level of the umbilicus. In this long axis view of the abdominal aorta, you can see the celiac artery, the superior mesenteric artery, and the left renal vein. The normal infrarenal diameter of the abdominal aorta is approximately 1.7 centimeters in men and 1.5 centimeters in women 50 years or older. Abdominal aortic aneurysm, or triple A, is a dilatation of the abdominal aorta to a diameter of 3 centimeters or more. In small statured individuals, an abdominal aortic aneurysm is a dilatation that measures greater than 1.5 times the normal diameter of the proximal abdominal aorta. 90% of AAAs are infrarenal. The mortality rate is high if an abdominal aortic aneurysm ruptures outside of the hospital. Therefore, early diagnosis and intervention are recommended before the rupture occurs. The results of the examination for AAA are positive if the measurement of the abdominal aorta is greater than or equal to 3 centimeters in diameter. The results are also positive if the measurement of the infrarenal abdominal aorta is greater than or equal to 1.5 times the diameter of the normal proximal aorta. This is particularly important in women or smaller individuals. 
The results of the exam are negative if no abdominal aortic aneurysm is detected. The results are indeterminate if the aneurysmal status cannot be defined because of non-visualization or only partial visualization of the abdominal aorta. If an aneurysm is detected, then additional images should be obtained in the transverse and longitudinal axis of the dilated segment. Measure the aneurysm at the point of maximal dilatation. Sometimes a thrombus may be seen in the abdominal aorta. In such situations, the abdominal aorta should be measured from outer wall to outer wall and should include the thrombus as well as any plaques within the measurement.